And when I talk about His presence, praise the Lord, I am talking about it by the degrees of the manifestation of God. Either we the man or beside the man. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I am aware that it's either the manifestation of, a, of God, we the without a man. But I'm talking about the degrees, the intensities. If, if you're talking of God being present, well, he's present everywhere. He's in a bar, he's in a club, he's everywhere. You understand? But the intensity of his presence comes in now the understanding of divine purpose. Purpose can only be realized where God intensifies the presence. When his presence increases in a certain place, then you know he is purposing something. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? So divine purpose, so much is correlated or has a very succinct relationship with God's presence in a place. If God purposes something, he will increase his presence. You understand? If he is purposed to something, he will increase his presence. Praise the Lord. Now why do I want to share? Of course, there are things I want to give you tomorrow. For example, I'll explain, uh, like from today, like up to tomorrow, some of you are going to understand why some people have results. Some people, even when they pray, they don't get results. You understand, they fast, they go to mountains, they, they do all these kinds of things, but they don't get results. They just don't get results. They just don't get results. Then there are also not another group of people who have not learned how to, 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 to intensify the presence of God around them. You understand? And so that means that they will live no more lives. You understand? They will live no more lives. They will live no more lives. They will get no more results. They will get no more results. You understand? And I'll, I'll prove to you by scripture how. You understand? You understand? But today I just wanted to first take a particular direction of prayer. That after prayer is understood by the simple principles that are to lay down by the gospel. Then tomorrow we'll go into something a bit deeper. Praise the Lord. So I advise for those of you who should be here. Because it's, 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 it's good to hear both parts. Right? This is just elementary what I'm going to give today. But tomorrow we're going to go a bit deeper. In there and just dig so people understand what it means to just bask in the glory of God. It's not just the statement you're speaking. Because you had another man speak it. But it's an experience that you've had with Almighty God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me begin with Luke 18 verse 11. A very common scripture read, but very misunderstood by very many people. Let's begin with verse, first verse, sorry, chapter 1. Luke 18, chapter 1. Luke chapter 18, sorry, verse 1. If you're there, say, Amina. Now the Bible says, that, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Did you hear that? What did he say? He said he spoke a parable to them that men ought to praise the Lord. Or to what? Always pray and not to faint. I'll read it again. He said, and he spake a parable unto them to this, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Give me the amplified version. Aha. Uh -huh. He says, also Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart and give up. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that word is very misunderstood. The Greek word for faint is actually a word called a kakeo, like e double k a k e o praise the lord a kakeo, where the bible speaks of that men always ought to always pray and not to faint right what the king james calls fainting it's what a kakeo. now the word a by the greek root explanation both by substance and character the word fainting in the english is just another term for it not necessarily the very bigger picture of the root of a cacao. Now, a cacao, the, the, the very root word that defines the cacao is, is, is spiritless. You understand? Like something that is spiritless, completely, utterly spiritless. A cacao is the experience where something seems utterly spiritless something without a spirit not necessarily the urgent power and and gas to do it but without the very spirit that does that if it should be done it can only be 
by its soul and body. So when the Bible says, that's what Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not spiritlessly. Praise the Lord. And not to faint. That word there for not to faint is actually a word that direct and not without the spirit. Did, did I make sense? The word used there for faint. I'm curious to know what the message version says. <laughs> message. I'm just curious to know. And Jesus told them a story showing that it was necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. That word for never quit. Faint. Whatever you want to call it. Ekakeo is more of completely without a spirit. Right? That means, if I should read it in the original version, it says, Men ought to always pray, but not without the spirit. You understand? Now, if you're talking of the first order of the, of the created man, that is the Adamic, and everything that followed before. How many of you know they were just natural men without spirit? So the Bible says, and so... How be it that the first was natural and the second was spiritual? Why was, why that, the Bible asks, why was the first one natural and the second one spiritual? Meaning the second Adam from the instance of salvation was spiritual, but the first Adam was natural. Right? You know, as you're saying, men ought to always pray, but not in the natural nature. Not in the natural sense. Not in the Adamic order. Am I, am I making sense? That means there is a life of prayer in the Adamic and there is a life of prayer in the spiritual Adam. There is a life of prayer in the first man. There is a life of prayer in the second man. God doesn't expect you to pray like Jeremiah. God doesn't expect you to pray like Ezekiel. God doesn't expect you to pray like Isaiah. God doesn't expect you to pray like Malachi. He does not expect you to pray like anybody that lived without a spirit. The Bible says that the first Adam was a living soul and the second one was a life-giving spirit. The dispensation of the grace laid on the first pandemic was only a place where the man could respond by soul and the body. Body now represents everything that gives you the power to do. Soul is represents everything that gives you the urge to do. You understand? Meaning that if a man should melt their affections and then cry and weep and scream, they're only doing it because the soulish realm is left there. You understand? That is why when you read the first, gen, the first testimony of, 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 of the scriptures, you realize men cried out, cried out. It's not bad to cry out. Praise the Lord. But when you see Jesus Christ in the New Testament, the new creature crying out, you, you go to, to, to Jesus and get a particular moment where you see Jesus weeping and crying out to the Almighty God. You realize for that was the substance of the spiritual life of God in a man crying out because of divine purpose, not necessarily the man's need. And many people have been led to the delusion that the more you cry because you have need, therefore it means that you are actually getting closer to your answer. And some of you, by that reason, have cried enough and realized you've never got an answer. Why? Because God's ministry with you is faith, not crying. Why, why, why you don't cry is because as the scriptures are very clear. He gave you a message. He gave you a why. You understand? That is why the Bible is very clear. For those of you who have read the story, of, 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 of Hagar and the boy. Right, Ishmael? The Bible tells you that she put the boy afar, not wanting to see the son cry. And then she went in the woods and started to cry. Hagar is the representation of those by the flesh crying. You understand? So she cries and cries and cries. And what do the scriptures say? The scriptures tell us, God comes to her and tells her, stop crying, for God has had the seed cry. You see how God reasons? Stop crying, for he has had the seed of faith cry. Seed 8, Luke 18, 11. What is it? The seed is the word. The word. Praise the Lord. Meaning, when a man has the word, they don't cry. Your word cries. Why? Because he looks to his word to fulfill it. The eyes of the Lord are searching out everywhere to find any man with logos and rema. To just find a man with revelation. The moment he meets revelation, when a man has the word, he dies and cries. Praise the Lord. When a man has the word, he does not cry because he needs something. Why? Because his seed cries. Hallelujah. But that's a place where a man has to cultivate by reason of applying and experiencing and, and, and working this out. Because tomorrow, I'll take time to explain to you the, the Greek word there used for disciples. The church, because of the delusions and the, delight, the lies that have been put all over by the doctrines of the devil, as represented the doctrines of Christ, or perhaps what Paul so speaks as, Speaking the doctrines of men as the doctrine of Christ. Many things have been disillusioned in the Bible. Deluded. Right? That when, when men 
read certain things, they read them from a, an ignorant angle more than just the understanding of exegesis or what the scriptures actually meant to mean. For example, if you read the word disciple, right, in the New Testament, you, you realize many of what people call discipleship class. is a group of folk who sit down and they are taught very many topics and at a particular point are approved for having understood and passed these topics and that is what they call discipleship. And if you go now to the Greek word, I think it has something like a mahetes, something like that. I'll explain it tomorrow. You realize that the word used there is more of a man who learns to practice, not a man who, who learns to understand. You understand? Why? Because it is only religion that puts a man in a place where he thinks he understands and knows everything that he has studied, but could never have the strength and power or the unction to do it. But how many people know a lot of things that they cannot do? Well, if you're the kind, then you're that, to that level religious. But if it is so, then if you must represent the testimony of the gospel as a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you realize that the Greek word used there is a man that reads to practice, reads to practice. That a man's validation is not to how many papers he has passed in the discipleship class, but to how many things he has manifested by the studies. Now, that leaves a lot of questions in the body of Christ. Why? Because we have settled enough for comfort zones for a long time that our satisfactions are in what men know but if the man says they know and they can't do it do they really know if you say you know how to drive a car why because you did the theoretical bit in driving school and then we give you a car and you can drive it did you study that is why there are a lot of people who have passed discipleship school but have actually failed the discipleship ministry they are not disciples of what they assume to have been discipled in but how many, by the same reason of religion, have been alienated to certain places of edification as of them that seem so important? Why? Because they went to Bible school. And a man says, I went to Bible school. You understand? I did discipleship. You understand? And they can't appoint a certain man in church because he did do discipleship. Why? Because their only understanding of a man appointed is because he has gone through the process of being taught by other men. They don't believe God can teach men. Well, I disagree. God teaches men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, back to this. Praise the Lord. He says, he said that parable and said, Men ought to always pray and not to faint. But he's not talking about the Adamic. He's not talking about the utterly spiritless. Right? He's talking about a man who is praying with the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow I'll explain more in that. He's talking about a man who is praying in the Spirit. The Bible says that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much power, dynamic in nature. Meaning any man that ought to be praying by this principle must have results. Not could, not should, not must have results. If you don't have results, then you must learn how to pray that way. Hallelujah. The Bible says, look at it in verse 1. And the, and the Spirit can say the parable. And to, them, to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now the Greek word there for always. It has been very misunderstood by many Christians. Because when the Bible says always pray, they actually mean every man ought to be praying every time. Right? And that's practically not what the scriptures are teaching. The scriptures are not teaching you to pray every time. Well, you might misunderstand me, go and study. You might misunderstand me, go and study. God, okay. Let me first ask this way. How many of you have seen people who pray every time but they never have results? Those few hands in the room mean that there are people who pray every time and never have results. They pray every time. Every time. But they never have results. They never have results. They never have results. And I'm going to prove to you in the book of Matthew why it's important to have results. Praise the Lord. Why it's very important to have results. I mean you must have results. I don't care whichever way you pray. Any prayer that never causes results, it doesn't matter how thunderbolting it is. It doesn't matter how it is. It doesn't matter how much a man sweats and just bends his knees. If it doesn't have results, it's not prayer. Prayer has results. Tell your neighbor, prayer has results. The Hebrew word there, for orange is a word called pantote. Right? Pantote. Like P-A-N-T-O-T. 
P-A-N-T-E-H. Panthote is, is a Hebrew, sorry, Greek word that translates as everywhere. Right? So God is more interested in a man praying everywhere than every time. Am I right? Now, I'll, 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 I'm going to get a bit deeper. God is more interested in a man who prays every when than every time. Every when is more than just praying all the time. All the time is wonderful. Okay? But every when means that there is, there is an appointment by the divine working of the Spirit to create the when time for every prayer. You understand? That every prayer is more of action than it is human orchestration. Because that's the difference between grace and the law. Law is what you do to get the blessing of God. Grace is what He does to get blessing on you. That's the essence of prevenient grace. The grace that goes before a man to work in the man to cause them to do certain things. That the man will not say, I am... By the way, the that man easily falls that man there's no difference between that man and the man who says I type the means I pray I fast you you don't fast you know you know you know what that has created in the body of Christ we have a bunch of very super spiritual folk who if you don't pray to their levels they will actually judge you I know why you won't say amen. You understand? But what that sabanga was saba to saba. You see that? Go over to mani kusaba. But what that genda ne mumani na kwa na matemuli demere te musenyeza. Ye abach ma inti kati go over one level chi. Ye awansiko ye asabi. You understand? You understand, brother Terry? That there is no grace in that. That is human fault. You understand? What difference is that between you and Moses? Moses used to go and spend 40 days just to get a face shining. Just to get one face shining. He did it 40 days. You, the Bible says, you carry the glory that excelleth. The Bible says you carry a glory that fadeth not like Moses. Is. You carry something that was on Moses but can't fade. Yet, if you go back to your life and realize how you carry that glory, you didn't pray for it. You didn't fast for it. That's why Paul asked the question. How who bewitched you foolish Corinthians? For how be it now that you began in the spirit, are you now perfected in the flesh? Did you receive the Holy Ghost by fasting and prayer? Or did you receive it? By what? By grace. So why do you now begin in the law to get a grace result, yet you actually began in the grace? If you began in the grace, walk in the grace, you'll finish well. Now, the instance, that's why I'm telling you, I, I want to first help certain people deliver. Stop praying because you've seen people praying. Are you hearing me? Stop praying because you saw another person pray. Right? And don't not pray because other people are not praying. But salvation is personal. It is you and your God. Are you hearing me? Before anything else comes. Well, there are other instances where a man can be led by anxious. Right? For example, there are people who have prayed because they had me pray. Or I have prayed in instances I've had Pastor Isaiah pray. But I've not prayed in instances when I had Pastor Isaiah pray because I had him pray, right? I prayed in the instances Pastor Isaiah prayed when the action of the when came. Meaning, I don't go into prayer because Pastor Isaiah is praying. I want to be like my papa. No. I go in prayer because the action of the Almighty God has burdened me what he is carrying. That what he is carrying is what I'm carrying. Then consequently, me and him are in the very burden. Why? Because the very ministry of multiplication by reason of submission and the very people that you raise, as the Bible says, is the testimony of how another carries your burden that they might lighten it a bit. Right? When you see certain men, you remember Evan Roberts. Evan Roberts used to cry every day. Not because he was so hungry for God, but because he was the only person who was carrying a burden for wells during that time. But as more men came on board and started to carry the burden, then he was lightened. That now it doesn't mean that his prayer life would change or that the time that he spends in the presence of God would reduce. But it only means that when he goes in the presence, he doesn't go with the burden. He goes lightened. Why? Because now he has men who carry the very substance that is inside him. Well, it's one thing to pray because your papa is praying. But let it be because the when action has come inside your spirit. Every when means 
that a man's spirit is disposed in a place where they can hear God draw them to prayer. When a prayer is begun by God, you will realize you won't be hypocritical. Why? Because prayers begun by eternity don't have a time frame to them. Can I prove it? Matthew 23, verse 14. Let me show you how some people are religiously deceiving the body of Christ. There's something. It doesn't happen now. It happened before. He says, Why unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive a greater damnation. They pretensely, they are, do you know how many people have not met the secret place of divine communion that it they should be a place of, of prayer. It should be the delusion place to expose them to a public that must observe them as prayer. I've been around people so long who have created the atmosphere of men who are praying. But if you look at their results, they're only losing their voices. They are only losing their voices. Trust me, there is not too much in that prayer. It, I'm telling you, I'm not abusing. I'm telling you the truth. Well, let me tell you. Tomorrow I'm going to explain the two kinds of lies, right? Why? Because the Bible says, well, and the God who sees you doing secret will richly reward you, right? Meaning there is a prayer where men pray by the secret. And I'm going to show you in Matthew how the scriptures say, for he will openly reward you. So the result is now that, okay, let's go there. Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 5. Let's begin there. Verse 5. He says, and when thou prayest, okay, when you pray, that means if we are now to define prayer, let us define it. He says, when you pray, thou shalt not be as a hypocrite, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So why, do they have, why don't they have results? Anybody that prays, in the presence of men will never have results. He didn't say anybody that prays with men or oh, amidst men. No. He, he spoke of people who pray that they may be seen of men. A man can pray without the intention of being seen as praying. He can shout his head so loud that the pureness in his spirit, for the Bible says all things are pure to them that are pure, but the pureness in the man's spirit is that he's not seeking attention from anybody. But the moment a man begins to seek attention from anybody, that man's reward is there. So you know why they don't receive results? Because their rewards are there. They end by the sea. They will never get results. Why? Because that's where they've ended, received. Their reward is, you have prayed to men, right? What is the reward? Men have known you to be a prayer person. That's all. But you see, it's one thing to be a prayer person by men and not being a prayer person with God. I have seen a lot of men who are so prayerful, right? I, 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 I have had instances of men who have even judged us in ministry. And he said, if the Bible says always pray, right? Everyone pray, right? But not without the Spirit. It means you must pray a spiritual man, not a carnal man, right? If you're praying a carnal man, right? You will pray in line with your needs. And because you're praying in line with your needs, you understand? You might forfeit and frustrate the ministry of the divine principles of God, of the things that ought to accompany you because of salvation. We have a lot of Christians who have mastered the art of praying for money, praying for children, praying for cars, praying for buying, and praying. But many of them don't even know how to pray divine purpose, God's next move on the earth. They don't look so in front, they look so behind. Right? And when they are looking so behind, they make sure that men see them. Why? Because at the end they want a glory. There are a lot of people here we have prayed for and we never came in your face and tell you, woman, I pray for you. Has anybody here ever had me mention midnight? The man I woke up at has anybody in this building ever come up and say, Oh, and then say, Oh, I no, I don't mention my times of, of, of prayer. Why? Because they are everywhere. That timing is eternal. It's not earthly. I don't need, I don't need a midnight prayer. But to close over in the next day, I will see miracles. Come on. What difference is between you and those who are bringing men under bondage in the book of Colossians who are submitting? Do not let men who, to bring you under bondage again to the submissions of holy days and these kinds of things. Which, 
which I use, but they are just the side of the real thing, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus never prayed on midnight only. Jesus never prayed at 3 or 5 o'clock anywhere. He prayed everywhere, everywhere he was. He prayed anytime, everywhere. When a man learns the art of everywhere, you realize even when you're in, you're praying. Filling the missing gaps. Hallelujah. You're in the taxi, you're praying. You're, 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 you're bathing, you're praying. Are you hearing me? You're combing your hair, you're praying. You're in the mirror, everywhere, anywhere. You see, praying by action, and tomorrow I'm going to explain to you more. You're going to realize that when a man learns the response to everyone, you realize it's very hard for that man to fall in trouble. Very hard. Very hard. You see, there's a divine principle that God has placed in every spirit of a child of God to sense an evil day. You understand? But if this wisdom not be in you, many of you are actually going through what you did not sense. Or if you sense, you did not have enough wisdom to respond to the senses. I'm talking of the spiritual senses, not the physical senses. Tomorrow I'll try to explain that. That is why many of you who have glimpsed into this life, you realize there is a tendency of certain things before they happen. You just feel something leading you to pray. You don't know why, but it leads you to pray. Are you hearing me? And then eventually, the more you pray, somehow, the thing happens, and then you understand why you were praying. That's a man growing in God. You understand? And as it increases now, you realize even the other side of life, it is for the preparation of a human spirit by the substance of praying enough faith if God wants to do a miracle through you. Perhaps and he knows you will need enough faith, and you must build up yourself in the Holy Ghost. You find yourself praying in tongues. In a few minutes, they bring a guy who is sick. At that particular point, God doesn't want you to pray again. Unbeliever. At that particular point, he just wants you to act in faith. Are you hearing me? Okay, before I go to Matthew, let's go to back to Luke 18, 11. 18, 1. I just wanted to show you something about one thing many people misunderstand. Okay? He says that he speak a parable unto them. It is a parable. To this end, meaning, men ought to always pray. This is saying, summarize it. Okay? The point. And not to faint. Now listen to this story. Because many of you know it. Next line. He says. There was. In a city a judge. Okay. Are you reading with me? Which feared not God. Neither regarded. Man. Next line. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying. Avenge me of mine adversary. That guy doesn't fear God. He doesn't have any regard for man next line and and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though i fear not god nor regard man next line yet because this widow troubleth me i will avenge her okay and i will avenge her at least by her continual coming she weary me now listen because many christians have read this thing they have misunderstood it a lot some people actually end there so what do they do Mukama, Yagala Moana, Mukama, Sidiakoa, Watugamba, O Mukazi, Oli, God. He told us of a woman who came before the judge. The judge refused, regarded no God, no man. And so I came. You understand? Huh? Now I come again. I come again. So what do they do? Money. 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 Job. 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 Child. 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 Marriage. Marriage, 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 DVD, 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 you understand? And so they are in that life, you understand? They are in that life, they are in that life, they are in that life, they are in that life. Now, many people, it's because they don't read this, the next verses, they just end there and quote anything out of context. Read the next line. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Next line. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Now listen. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear along with them? Okay? Now, next line. I tell you, listen, this is Jesus. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Not come back again, come back again, come back speedily. If you still don't understand it, let's go. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Meaning you're not supposed to be doing that. 
You're not supposed to be going again back to God. Moana, Moana, Moana. See, the sun came now. Hey, I'll say it again. The sun came now. If he, what he wants to find on earth is not a bunch of folk who know how to repeat prayers. And I'll come back to that again. But if he wants to work with a bunch of folk now who carry faith. Why? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the Bible says the elders obtained a good report. Right? Now the essence of faith is, and I'll give you a few scriptures. If you ask anything, the Bible says, without whatever, and you believe that you have it, you shall have it. When a man asks and believes that what he has asked for, he has received, that man can't go back again to ask for the thing he has believed that he has received when he asked. If you believe that you're healed, okay? Why do you go back again and say, God, heal me, oh Lord, and I'll be healed. And then the next guy on Sunday singing, you are the Lord, but he left me. Yeah, and heal me, you're, he left me, heal me, he left me. No, you see, there are a lot of things. Some of these things are, because again, many of you are more sentimental. You're so soulish well, okay? Some of you are still can. Even simple songs that carry wrong messages can go through you. And let me tell you, once a song begins with a wrong message, it can't bring a good result. That as, as I, I, I thought of this song they were singing. They were in my eyes. Did you hear that? He said, the one out here, be. No, they weren't born of thee. No. They, they were not by eye. They just changed. That's not the Bible. The Bible says that I was born in iniquity. From my mother's womb, I was born in iniquity. Actually, what it would be. The Bible says, by one man's sin, all became sinners. You were born with the sin. You were born a sinner. You just get born again to come to Christ. But you can't say, Mutewari muyaye wachuka buchusi. No, tewayachuka. Yari muyaye totally. Why? Because iniquity met you in your mother's womb. Meaning, the moment you stand over, iniquity began. Bad guy. Wazari wori cowboy. Wazari wori killer. Wazari wori drug addict. So when you were born that way. Anything you did before salvation was what you were born to do. By the testimony of the devil. But bless God we have another report. I said bless God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's some of these things that we are ignoring. But carry the very testimony of if the gospel should be preached. Because now if I preach that in a club. And I want. Okay. You think I'm criticizing. I'm not criticizing. I'm trying to correct that. that if you write tomorrow, you don't write that way. Okay? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Speaking the truth in love, not hate. Okay? Besides, you'll soon visit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. He says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, he shall find faith on the earth. Son of Man shall find faith on the earth. Is that, will he? Because if it does, then it's different. You don't need to ask God for seven things, seven times. He, he knows what you need before you even pray. Now let's go back to Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 5. So has the point been met? So if they ever preach that someone, and then you get to the point where they tell you, ask until God hears. You're not born again. He say, push, ha ha, pray until something happens. Well, for us it happened already. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrite. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues, right? And in the corners of the streets, and they, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you that they, they have their reward. They have their reward. Next line. But thou, now you, who doesn't want to be seen by men? When thou prayest, enter into thine closet. He's not saying every time you pray, go to the closet. He only means, even when you're in a multitude of millions, you have a closet. And I'll explain that tomorrow. Say amen. And when thou hast shut thine door in your closet, okay? He says, pray to thy father, which is in secret. God begins when a man closes a closet with a door. And I'll explain how to do that tomorrow. Okay? 
And the Bible says, And thine father, which fear in secret. In other words, he doesn't see in public. The divine principle. Try to understand this. And your father, which fear in secret, shall reward thee openly. Have you been around people who can judge a lot of men for not praying, but some men seem like they have results openly? It's impossible. You cannot have results openly and you don't have a secret life of prayer. It can never happen. It's just that a lot of men have not met the secret place and want to put you under bondage by making an open place, place prayer that men see. It's very easy to judge a man who you have not seen praying and you actually assume he doesn't pray. But look at open results. You look at open results. You cannot get to that if you don't know how to pray a certain way. Numbers just don't come. Ministries are just not built. You don't just make choir. You don't. You don't just do. You don't just effect lives. It doesn't matter how much grace is on you. There should be a place for you to respond to that grace. It's one thing for you to have a grace on your life. It's another if you cannot respond to the grace of God upon your life. You understand, Brother Terry? It is not a place of working. It is a place of receiving the grace. And when the grace enters you, he worketh more abundantly than them all. That's why Paul says, For I labored more than all my brethren, yet not I, but the grace of God labored in me. When a man has grace praying in him, that man you might actually be around and think he doesn't pray. Why? Because his business is, there is a grace that prays in secret. Uh, but is rewarded openly. Are you hearing me? Now, if you learn these principles, you will realize that it doesn't matter how long men judge you. Your communion and accountability is to Almighty God, not Grace Lubega. Why? The body of Christ is sick and tired of folk who want to bring complexities to bring men to bondage again. But without giving people answers. What people need are answers, not complexing their lives. And for some of you who are read church history, there is just this one thing I've realized that has been a cycle. Okay? Revival, complexities, fall, simplicities, revival, complexities, fall, simplicities, revival, complexities, fall, simplicities, revival, complexities, fall, simplicities, revival. Every time they fall, they now go back to the simplicity of the gospel. When the simplicity comes, revival comes. When revival comes, they complex it. When they complex it, they fall. When they fall, they go back to the simplicity. Then the by revival comes again. And then we revive and they, they complex it. After complexing it, and it begins this way. Moves come and the man is hungry. Guys are tired. They are praying. And the power of God comes. People are filled. People are healed. People are delivered. Ministries are all throbbing. Then all of a sudden, men get so involved in extracurricular, irresponsibly, inexcusably, irrelevant ministries on top of what God has... Now, when a man tells you, let us select seven men who are full of the Holy Ghost, okay, <laughs> that they might be engaged in the administration of food, that we might dedicate more time to prayer and fasting, okay? It literally means that as a man grows in God and ministry increases, so the more time that a man needs to both study the word and pray. And that's how the principle is. But how many ministers do you know as the ministry increases, less time to pray? As the ministries increase, less time to commune? As the ministries increase, less, why? Because there are these things we call complexity. Things that you involve yourself in as a minister and you're not supposed to be involved in. Why? Because you have the zeal but not according to the knowledge. You carry the idea of how now to continue the kernel establishment and upholding of what you know was begun by Almighty God. But in the end of the day, you are bound to fail. Why? Because you're killing the primary ministry that started the thing. Alexander Dowie was a healing minister. He went about doing miracles and everything. But one day the man wakes up after he knows that he has a whole of Zion healing in his mouth. And then he starts to build a city. God didn't call Alexander to build a city. God called him to heal men. By the time he builds the city and finishes it, the man was so eaten up by money that he didn't even know the sides of the doors of the church. He was still born again, but the substances were of more of a city than it was for the church. That by the time Alexander, though he died, he could not even pass the more than 20 people, yet he carried the city. Complexity. How many people have been eaten up so much in church administration 
that they no longer know the way of the Spirit. Some of you have been with us for a long time. I don't even know how much money we have in the coffers. I don't even know when they buy what. Except when Pastor Isaiah sometimes calls me. He also needs to consult. Because we have more stuff to do than engage. But there are people who even in their own ministries, they're the usher, they're the prayer warrior, they're the worshiper, they're in church, all the money, they sign the money in the bank. Everything they do, they just do. You understand? Everything they just want to do. I mean, I don't want to even be a signatory on my ministry. If I can appoint somebody to do that and then they go and sign for money, come on, can you rob me? You cannot rob me. No. You either rob yourself or you die. The divine demon. You understand? I don't. That's the truth. That's the truth. My brother Gideon knows. The other day I went and bought something expensive from a certain guy. So we had very expensive, some expensive, very nice and expensive. So we, I bought it. And we have a guy who works at home. The house help. So my sister chased him away because he was becoming the boss of the house. He went with my thing and stole it. He took it. I went to my bedroom. I told him, this, it's not even, I, I caught the devil. I told him, come. <laughs> the devil, come, 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 come. I went in my bedroom. I told the devil, I tie, I give, I have done principle. You cannot. Now, soon when I preach divine providence, I have like two more sermons to explain. Okay? I'll explain why when a man has done the principles of God, if he loses, he has just opened a door for more provision. He doesn't lose. I'll explain principles by scripture. So I went to the guy, I told him, boss, I know I've not lost. Because the Bible says when a thief steals to eat, that one, forgive him. But at what you've stolen, you're not going to eat. Seven times. Right? I told the devil, I don't want seven things. I want exactly my thing. I don't know where this guy is. He's hundreds of kilometers. He actually left the country. I think went to Rwanda. I don't know. But me, I want my thing. And I told him, and tomorrow. And I'm going to call where I bought it. You must pay. Next morning, I called the guy. I told him, hey, how are you? I'm fine. They stole my thing. He says, ah, sorry. I want another one. To me, you. You want another one. Grace, you're my customer. This one, I'll give it to you for free. Pay back to black. Pay back to He brought it. He got on the border, came, said, here it is, spends it. He told me, Muslim by the way, not Shababa, Muslim. He got exact thing and put it on my desk and told me, have a good day. I didn't pay for it. I don't pay for what the devil steals. Nara. Go back to take it there. Which you take it there? Anyway, I was trying to give you the point that there are a lot of things that many men have engaged in and they ought not to. And these very things frustrate what they ought, that many of them are like Mary. They are troubled with many things. And they forget the real thing. I have a summon on that, but I also have a deeper one. I'll explain soon. Because there was something about Mary. The Bible, you see, many people... Jesus didn't say Mary has done something good that shall never be taken. The Bible says, Mary has discovered. Now, if you go back in the life and mystery of discovery, you realize that the very testimony of discovery must be revelation. And it is the outward stumbling on a thing by chance. It wasn't by chance that Mary started the feet. And it wasn't by chance that Master was serving. Okay? Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. But this is the one point I wanted to make before I finish. There are people who if they don't show men that they pray, they can never be satisfied. That spirit that seeks to please men has a very serious adverse effect that it goes even deeper than prayer. Right? Now I don't want to first give it a name yet because 
I might not even get out of this building. But let me give you a bigger picture. How many of you have people around you? Whatever they do, they must say. How many of you have parents when they give your brother money, even when you're talking? Ivan namwade mitwari. Rita namwade mitwari. Now that spirit, if it keeps in charge, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. That's the Isaiah. Your reward is there. Your reward is there. I know why you won't say amen. Because you're too anointed. For you, you don't do it. You're now looking at who is doing it. Not you. You cannot do it. You're smarter than that. Let me tell you something. If you want to see how many men are not profiting, for example, if you look at, there are some people who tithe and never receive that. There are people who do a lot of things in the gospel, but they never seem to have an outcome and results for what they do in the gospel. Look at their personal lives. Many of them suffer from the spirit that needs to do in the eyes of men. That many of them have not learned how to invest in the secret where the Father sees. Meaning, the eyes of the spirit of God observe a certain laboring in a man because of where the man has yielded his seed. It's the same thing with the message we preach. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. Hmm? Even this message we preach, there are people who can preach a very good message but never have numbers. Why? Because they received their rewards before they came on the pulpit. Messages are preached in the eyes of the Father before they are delivered to men. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Now the place of meditation is not thinking what you're going to preach and trying to find out how you'll preach it. When you do that, your sermon will seem like it was man-made. The place of meditation is the spirit of a man yielding to the ministry of Father God. Are you hearing me? That whatever comes out of your spirit as a saying by the spirits in the secret place is actually a confirmation of the Father's affirmation. That is why when you look at men who preach the law, the Bible tells you they speak of things they affirm not. Meaning, they don't have the first place of speaking. You see, the ministry of God speaking to a human spirit by the ministry of revelation is that God spoke once and twice I heard. The hearing is twice. Meaning, that voice can be interpreted as a two time. The first place is the mind of the Father. The second place is the response of the mind of the Father. Why? Because he knows you carry the mind. Now, if you don't understand, don't worry. You will understand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there are people who, if they don't show, if they don't do anything, praise the Lord, if they cannot do a thing that, that, that proves that, that they, they, they are praying, they, they can never... Or if somebody won't, if people won't look at them and know that this one is praying, if they won't do something, but actually people should look at and know that this one is praying. They never stop praying. You understand? So what is their ministry on earth? Their ministry is to make sure that you confirm their prayer. And many of those men, their rewards are with them. If you want to know a man who prays, I'll repeat it again. Look at the open reward. Let me say it again. If you want to know a man who prays, look at the open reward. If you look at the pastor, and, and that's why tomorrow I'm going to slap what some people call prayer. So that you understand what really prayer is. So when you go in, you go in expecting you get results. Instead of wasting time praying for one whole hour. For, okay, let's continue. Next line. I want to finish. Next line. Verse 7. He says, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions. So you remember the widow? Remember the widow? God, God, my case, my case, my case. You see, this man she's pleading with does not regard God. Neither man. If he did, he would understand that my God answers speedily. Okay? As the heathen do. For they think that they shall be had for their much speaking. Give me the message version of that. I'm curious. 
He says, the world is full of so-called prayer warriors. <laughs> Just give me a second. I love this guy. <laughs> the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. Shababa, mukama, ojamu vile, akustabira, muavu, naka vera. She came in broke. She's stinking. She died. Nothing. Marriage failed. Business failed. Relationship failed. Are you hearing me? She has pumped the hair. It's all funny. It has spent like five weeks. Are you hearing me? She has growth. She's scratching her hair with a torn bag. You understand? And borrowed shoes. You understand? And a top that Amit gave her last week. And she's also coming. Mokama, Omusumba, Omuyambe, Alibubi, Lojazi, Muyambe. Afuna mga mama rumiruwa bandonga tewe rumiruwa. Yesu. Shut up. Right to call him to Pastor Isaac. We're doing this thing. So that we will get to a place. When they say, that one is a prayer warrior. Eh? Thank you. Now, that is a chipima warrior. You see, okay, let me explain why it is easily applicable. Okay? Look at preaching, for example. Papa knows Gilbert. Eh? This verses some of you feel beautiful in. For us, we used to cover praise in verses. Praise. Eh? Until some people sit us down. I mean, you sit in a bus, back in bus. Are you hearing me? Not a mother to simulant here. He has given me. Okay, no, but come I will Who will stop you? Banana Spirita. Banana Spirita. We come to Kendo. Mubasi. We come to Chibuga. We come. Some of you are too beautiful. You, you, you're broke. You're already in a costa. But you're still beautiful in it. You don't have money to buy a car. Are you hearing me? But you're too beautiful in a coaster. Moreover, it's old Mokono. Come on! Get to a place. Are you hearing me? Where you're too dangerous in a coaster that the devil will pray you a Range Rover. He will pray you have it. I tell you, 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 Then you also begin from there and tell him now that I got a car, you're in danger. Some people when they get cars they become too busy. But when you you when you get a car, you tell the devil, oh, oh you're in danger. But you're too broke. You also status quo unequally yoking. You think unequally yoking is having a boyfriend who is a Muslim? No, unequal. <laughs> These guys are full of formulas and programs and advice. Bariba wa magesi banange na bagense ba makama na ndaka na ngamba. They are so <laughs> oh, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. They know the formula. They are so ignorant about prayer. But they are called prayer warriors. Listen. Prayer warriors. What makes you a prayer warrior will never be, never be, the formulas and techniques and those good things you call prayer. Yes, even if they don't want to pray. I hear him, you who pray, what have you shown? You're broke, you're sick, you're beggared, you're lacking. Your everything as calls for him. And you, you're calling yourself prayer warrior. Me, don't pray for me. You understand? Let my papa pray for me. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> not like that. Don't you get a walk at your knees. I'm going to put it. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Next line. Verse 8. I want to finish. Verse 8. He says, 
don't fall for that nonsense. Okay? Don't fall. Don't, 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 don't be shaken because a man can vibrate chairs. Okay? He says, this is your father you're dealing with and he knows better than you what you need. Okay? Give me the King James version of that. King James. He says, Be not you therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask. So, that means this praying spirit can't ask for what they already know they need to have because the father knoweth that they need it. That man can't go in prayer with need. Cannot. Sitting koko, nimpungo. Sitting koko, nimpungo. Sitting koko. Some guy was on prayer mountain, Siri Nkoko, Ndipungu, 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 Siri Nkoko. I'm not a chicken. <laughs> He's convincing himself. Of what he already is. Listen. That's why I think the devil must sometimes have fun with some people. <laughs> he's looking at this guy. And he's like, who said you're chicken? I mean, I think the devil has some guys. Next line, I want to finish. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next line. After this minor. Therefore, pray ye, our Father, who art in heaven. Now, he spoke of a manner of prayer, not a prayer. Praise the Lord. He spoke of not a prayer. Praise the Lord. How many people have vainly repeated prayers and called that prayer? How many people have seemed to be prayer warriors, but without even the ideas of about prayer? How many people have acted like they know it all but they never know it why because the results don't show it if you know it results will show it if you know it your results will show it in banking we have a we have a saying okay majorly when we are analyzing cash flows income statements balance sheets yet yeah? we, we always have a saying that figures never lie numbers never lie Anything can lie, but numbers never lie. A guy can say, well, Grace, I don't see your productivity. Then you bring him your balance scorecard and tell him, hey, this month I've opened this much company accounts, I've opened this much personal accounts, this much this account, and this much this account. So if you're saying, but I'm not in office and I'm elsewhere doing my own business, who else is doing these accounts? And your manager will say, numbers never lie. Okay? They would rather have a man who is not in the office the whole day and get them results than a man who sits in the office. I'm talking to people who stay at church 24 hours, but are broke. They actually bench people who are coming to pray. You understand? Why? Because numbers never lie. Results never lie. Results never lie. How God will raise a church that will be results-oriented? Than formulas. Okay? Praise the Lord. Because when you pray, you know you're praying. Are you hearing me? I mean, you know that you're praying. When you say, Lord Jesus, you, you hear the guy say, Wang, you, you literally know he's there. Are you hearing me? When you learn that, and you realize the needs of men are met, you realize there's another way and reason why men pray. That when you find another Christ, a Christian with that understanding on the prayer mount, you realize they're looking for something money can't buy. Abata no nyam said. Abata no nyam said. By the time that kind of Christian goes to a prayer mountain, they need something way deeper than anything that they can be given down the ground. You understand? That, that our prayers will be so filled of God, right? That we shall easily intensify the presence of God. Because the essence of intensifying the presence of God, by the way, a man can intensify the presence of God. Somebody can say, how come? As a man responds to divine purpose, presence easily increases. So the more a man's spirit increases to the response of divine purpose, that man 
easily sees the wonder working power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost so heavy on his life. There are many instances, sometimes when I'm there and some people can't even shake my hand. Some of you have experienced it. You can't even look at me in the face. Right? That's not for grace, that's for every believer. The moment a man yields more and more to divine purpose, the anointing easily comes. He easily comes. Why? Because he works with divine purpose. Now the essence of his yielding was, if you look at the experiences of Peter, the Bible says as he stood and spoke in the house of Cornelius, the spirit started. Right? At that particular point, God is too yielded to purpose. But when a man is so hemmed in the purpose, you can't explain how far the man can go in God. And neither can you explain the circumference of his influence in the spiritual world. Praise the Lord. And as a man grows in that light, you realize that even your name starts to go ahead of you. That men in South America will dis discuss you before you are even there. That when they meet you, they meet the affirmed, approved Spirit of God. Not the man that seeks to introduce himself. When you don't seek to introduce yourself, you realize you don't struggle with a lot of things. You understand? Why? Because that life is sorted in God. There are a lot of Christians who know a lot of formulas and methods to pray. But they've forgotten the simplicities that are in Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible speaks of a church Jesus Christ had a point against. Why? He says, because you have neglected. You have loved. You have ignored the guy. You have left him. But he knew of the laborers and the faith. And the works that he had. They were laborers. They had faith. They had a lot of love and ministry. But the gospel only ended in the morals that if you want to define a man like Jesus is a guy who is generous and loves people and forgives. But has a lot of ignorance in his mind that he cannot raise a dead man when he dies. But he can give all his money to give a very nice funeral for that man. And I'll tell you something. Even the people in the world can do that. Muslims are fasting. They are giving to the poor. More than many of you Christians who fast. Some of you even become more selfish when you're fasting. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I'm not saying the gospel is not about morals. I'm only saying the morals are just a part of the gospel. And I'll say this thing as I finish. There's been this lie in the gospel where men have been convinced to think that they are to be like Jesus was on the earth. And none of those people can prove it by the scriptures. The imitations of Christ are not what a man ought to do to be like Jesus. Otherwise, go and buy a robe and put on sandals like him and walk the streets. And grow long hair because you want to be like Jesus Christ. He's not talking about the outward imitation. He's talking about the life that is after the very life of Christ himself. Continuing his dominion on the earthly realm. That one has a different ministry in the dispensation of the New Testament. That's different from the old. Now it is as he is, not as he was. As he is. Meaning Jesus Christ has a present day ministry. And I have a sermon on that. I have to preach a sermon called the present day ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you'll understand why now the church has become so cheap. In the instance now preaching morals only. And dogmas. And many men cannot stress the life. Why? Because they have not experienced. So they cannot preach what they have not experienced. It's easy for a man to teach you to stop quarreling but it's hard for him to teach you to make a lame man walk and let me tell you something the world is looking at us hallelujah hallelujah speak to the Lord Jesus as the deep and the water so